でも始まるのかしら Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to build the Lolly Angel of Extermination of Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky, Rene Bright. So, let's begin by talking about the factions that she has access to. And she's actually part of three factions, which is Dark, Yeless Legends, as well as Heroes of Space and Time. So the combination of three separate factions gives her a lot of faction buffers, which makes her very easy to use, right? You know, Bozo faction buffs her, Landius faction buffs her, as well as Yoshua. So she's very, very friendly for Summit Arena in terms of bringing a character who can one-shot enemies and faction buff. However, I should mention that she's not considered a top-tier PvP character. In fact, Rene is more of a PvE character. Uh, she's an extra single target killing mage who can debuff enemies very heavily. So with that said, let's begin by talking about the characters that you require to upgrade her bonds. And because she is a collaboration character, she doesn't need anyone to upgrade her bonds. Okay, So that's one big advantage of Rene. If I just bring up her bond powers, you can see the fourth bond unlocks from getting access to her wizard class. Fifth bond unlocks from getting access to her Angel of Death class. Third bond means completing 3-1 elites. And then the second bond is win five times in arena with Rene. All right. So with all that said, let's begin talking about Rene's talent. And her talent is Angel of Death, where when entering battle with an enemy with a debuff, int defense and magic defense increase by a certain percentage. After dealing damage to an enemy, afflicts them with a random debuff. Okay. For the percentages, at 3 stars, it's 5%. At 4 stars, it becomes 8%. At 5 stars, it's 11%. And at 6 stars, it becomes a 15% int, defense, and magic defense increase. So basically what this means is, Rene can single target strike enemy mages and whatnot, and come out okay because of the increased magic defense. And of course, she does a lot of damage, right? In addition to that effect, she also applies debuffs on enemies that she attacks. So this debuff, uh, it's one debuff at three stars, four stars, and five stars. And at six stars, it becomes actually two random debuffs. So Rene is basically a single target damage killer as well as a debuffer. So she kind of combines elements of, if you will, Bozel and Lana together, right? With Bozel, just like Bozel, she can apply debuffs, but she actually applies even more debuffs than Bozel does. And then like Lena, she is does quite a bit of damage. Yeah. It's not 30%, right? It's only 15%, but it does help increase her damage dealing. One important thing to note, because the talent Angel of Death increases intelligence, her soldiers, because all soldiers are based on attack, they don't get that benefit. So she does lack a bit of damage in that sense. All right, so now let's talk about her classes and the skills that come from them, okay? First skill, she starts off with Shadow Spear. It does 1.5 times damage and it's effective against holy units for one cost, okay? Pretty standard single target attack skill, except it counters holy units. Next, okay? From her Mage class, she gets Free Strike to counter Lancers. Archmage gives her Calamity Throw, and it's actually a very interesting skill. Cooldown of 3, okay? It has a range of 7 blocks. It attacks all enemies in a line, dealing 0.33 times AoE damage, and it inflicts 2 random debuffs on the enemies. So, combined with her talent, it means either 3 debuffs, or actually 4 if she's at 6 stars which is huge, okay? So it's a line attack as opposed to an AoE attack, but extremely long range with seven blocks ahead of her. One of her core skills, in fact. At least for PvP anyways. From the wizard class, she gets Fireball as well as Decay. Pretty standard attack skills, okay? On the right side, 
she has the class Tea Party Host. And this class gives her Dark Matter. This is a very unique uh, single target strike skill, and it costs two points. Okay? It does 1.5 times damage, but in addition to that, it reduces enemies' healing effects by 100%. This effect lasts two turns, and it cannot be dispelled. Okay? So, enemies cannot be healed if they get attacked by Dark Matter. There are counters though. Equipment does counter and prevent this effect from being applied, right? So that's something to be aware of. While it's a great skill that can't be dispelled, if you can't apply it initially, then it would do nothing. So think, let's say, Thousand Hooves and enemies who have Overlord's badge, right? If Leon's Thousand Hooves manages to land on an enemy, then they lose mobility and their guard is disabled and it cannot be dispelled. But if they already have that immunity, then your effect won't even get applied. So something to keep in mind. And then finally, her final class is Angel of Death. She gets Wind Blade from this, and her really what's considered her ultimate skill, Rene Annihilation. Okay, two two turn cooldown, two block range. The attack hits a single enemy, dealing 1.3 times damage. If the enemy has three or more debuffs, this attack reduces the enemy magic defense by 100%, and the enemy cannot counter attack. This skill single-handedly defines Rene, because as long as the enemy has three debuffs, they're suddenly taking full damage, zero magic defense, and no counter attack. So it's a single target killing skill, that's basically it. Right, so that is why for PvP, a great combo is Calamity Throw to apply debuffs. Hopefully four, right, at six stars. Even if, let's say, the enemy Liana dispels one debuff, there's still three debuffs on the enemy, and then you can use Renate Annihilation to one-shot the enemy target. So that would be really her best combo, right? Calamity Throw, then Renate Annihilation, and then you choose a one-point skill. The interesting thing about her one-point skill skills are she has a huge variety of them right there is shadow spear for holy units there is free strike for lancers there is wind blade for flyers and there's fireball for infantry the only class she can't counter is cavalry units every single other class she has a single point skill that can counter them so Given that Summit Arena allows you to change your skills once the parties are picked, it just works out perfectly that way. Because you can choose what single target skill you want. Alright, so best skill combos is, as I mentioned, really just Reading Annihilation with Calamity Throw for the debuffs, right? And then one of the single target point skills. Yeah. You can always throw in DK to replace Rene Annihilation if you think that battle is going to be focused more on AoE attacks, but be aware that her DK is a standard skill, right? 3 span, 3 range, you know? It's not like, let's say, Earthquake and those skills which have 3 range but a span of 4 blocks, so something to be aware of. The span on Rene's AoE attack is not very large. And Dark Matter, as I said, because you're, you don't know if you can always apply this, it's a dangerous skill to bring. Um, it's really based on what equipment the enemy has, ultimately, right? For example, I think it's... For example, if the enemy tank has... Let me see if I can find it. Uh, sorry, hitting the wrong button. Summon. Gallery. Equipment. And accessories. Okay, so if the enemy has blood packed, right, grants immunity to effects that prevent you from being healed or buffed, then suddenly that skill is useless, right? So whether you can bring dark matter, <laughs> you're playing a guessing game there. That's basically it. You're playing a guessing game with dark matter on whether the enemy has immunity to. Uh, healing, you know, reduction effects. Alright. 
So with that said, let's now talk about her best class. So obviously with two, you can choose between wizard and a demon class, right? A mage class or demon class. Demon classes always have all around better stats, more hit points, more intelligence, more defense, more magic defense, right? But they do lack the ability to hurt holy classes, okay? So that's the decision you have to make. Wizard is more general purpose, but it has less stats in general. Demons have more stats, but they really struggle against holy enemies. Right now, at the current stage of the game, I might say you might consider keeping her as wizard or as demon. That's up to you. But later on, I would say demon class is definitely the better class. The reason for that is because in the future, when Tiaris and Liana, you know, they end up getting their access to their uh, second, third tier skill, right? So Liana gets access to, I guess, a summon. A, I, if, I think it branches off the summoner branch and it allows her to summon angels, okay? And that's a mage type class. Generally speaking, people leave her as a mage and that means she's no longer, well, she's no longer holy. So she no longer will counter um, demon class characters. Similarly, most people change Tiaris out of her holy class as well once she gets access to that second class. It should be... From what I remember, it's off the Unicorn Knight class, and again, it's a mage type class that you put her into. So another healer that is not a holy class is what Tiaris ends up as. So given that's the case, the only true holy class characters ends up being one, Ledin, and two, Shafaniel. And I suppose three Chris if anyone brings Chris to PvP. But Regardless, there's very, very few holy class uh, characters in Summit Arena. And as a result of that, de uh, her demon class ultimately ends up being her best class as a result. Okay, so with that said, let's now talk about Renny's soldiers. Okay, hero boost. Her starting hero boost is 0% on hit points, 5% attack, 10% defense, 15% magic defense. So it looks like it's a very defensive oriented hero boost, right? For the soldiers. However, it's actually very misleading because if you open up her bonds and bring up, uh, sorry, I put some, I already upgraded her bonds a bit. Here we go. So her third bond actually boosts hit points and attack. So even though initially she gets a lot of defense and magic defense by default, her third bond boosts hit points and attack. So her final stats ends up looking very different from what the initial soldier boost suggests. Okay. In fact, what it ends up being is, let's see, 25% hit points increase, 30% attack increase, 10% defense Sorry, 20% defense increase and 25% magic defense increase. So it's kind of a split up uh, soldier boost, you know? But 30% attack is pretty good. You know, it's not 40%, but 30% is generally enough. But it's, a, it's very interesting. So she's fairly general purpose in that sense. Hip, decent amount of hit points, decent amount of defense, decent, decent amount of magic defense for her soldiers. Which is, which is kind of what allows her to use, you know, any kind of soldier. Alright, from the training ground, the soldiers she gets access to are 1. Hellfire Archers, 2. Dark Centurion, and 3. The Undead Knight. Okay, I just don't have the Undead Knight unlocked, so she can't equip them, but that's what she gets from her training ground. But her best unit is generally considered to be Sorceress. Just like Lana, just like Bozel, the fact that sorceresses get a 40% attack increase at 100% hit points makes them her best soldiers right there. You know, she can use wizards, but why would you use wizards when you have sorceresses? Generally speaking, you don't particularly want to use you know, lancer soldiers like melee characters on Rene because melee characters will not participate in the fight when she uses two range attacks. And Rene is so heavily based on using the two range attacks as opposed to using two AoE strikes. So, there we go. 
Last but not least, let's talk about her gear and her enchants. Okay. Enchants is up to you. Uh, there's two that are generally recommended for Rene. The first one is clocks, right? Clocks is pretty obvious because you want to keep being able to use Rene Annihilation and debuff enemies with Calamity Throw, right? So that one is a fairly obvious uh, choice. However, other than clocks, Rene has no real ability to increase her mobility, right? So she's one of the characters that are stuck at 3 mobility in general. As a result, the Breeze Enchant is also very good for her. It's a very viable alternative to clocks. Which one you choose is kind of up to you. I would say if you're talking purely about PvE content, go with clocks for sure, right? If you plan to do Summit Arena and World Arena and so on, that's where the choice between clocks and Breeze is tough. I can't make that decision for you, whether you choose Clocks or Breeze, but you'll have to make it. And in terms of equipment, I'm going to bring up the Google Spreadsheet, but before I bring that up, well, I should say, Rene, in order to use her Rene Annihilation skill effectively, there has to be three debuffs on the enemy, right? So her set of gear should be all about applying debuffs on the enemy, every piece. If it can apply a debuff, it's great for her. So now, with that said, let's now bring up the Google Sheets. Just give me a moment to bring that up. Uh, here we go. All right, so weapons for mages or demon class characters. Well, because you want to debuff an enemy, there's really only one at this time, which is Miracle Staff. Yes, it increases AoE damage by 15%, but when attacking, you have, after battle, there's a 30% chance to deal one random debuff to the enemy. AoE attacks work with the skill. She can also choose to use the single target one when it gets released, which is Magic Guide, right? When attacking, before combat, 50% chance to deal one random debuff to the enemy. This one does not work with AoE attacks, right? The thing is though, with her skill Rene Annihilation, even without this buff of 15% damage dealing, she will be able to kill targets, right? It just hits that hard. 100% magic defense reduction. They're, they have no magic defense. It's a guaranteed one shot. So you don't actually need magic guide, which is why in general, Miracle Staff is considered better because Miracle Staff Regardless of one, what kind of attack you use, whether it's an AoE attack or single target strike attack, it will have the chance to apply the debuff. Next, armor. Armor wise, there's really only two armors that can debuff enemies, right? The first one is Death's Robe. When attacked, you have a 30% chance to increase the enemy's damage taken by 20% and lasts two turns. So Death's Robe is one of the ones that works. The other one is Tenyo's Robe. When attacked, 30% chance to dispel one enemy buff and inflict one random debuff to the enemy. Tenyo's Robe is definitely better because first it gives 10% more hit points, which increases Rene's survivability, especially in her demon class. And second, it has the chance to dispel an enemy buff, right? If you dispel the enemy attack or int increase portion of the faction buff, they're gonna do less damage to you, increasing your survivability. So overall, Tenyo's Robe is considered her best armor. You can use Steph's Robe, but I would say Tenyo's Robe would be the choice, as long as you have one. Helmets. Helmets, pretty obvious. Sharon, because Sharon has a 50% chance to apply a debuff that increases damage received for the enemy. Right? So. <laughs> no need to look at any other helmet. Sharon will do it. And, you know, other options include Odin's Battle Helm, right? But the problem with Odin's Battle Helm is, it's, I, I personally think it's more important for you to make sure the enemies are debuffed than it is to have an effect that dispels 5 buffs from an enemy. So that's my personal opinion. So overall, Sharon, best helmet. Don't need to look at any of the other ones. And finally, 
accessories. For accessories, there is actually an accessory that debuffs enemies, and that's Eye of the Beholder. When attacking after battle, grant a 50% chance to reduce enemies' damage dealt by 15%. It lasts one turn. I actually don't have one, the Eye of the Beholder, so... But when I get one, definitely going to give it to Rene. If you don't have Eye of the Beholder, just give her any other one of these accessories, you know? Holy Ring would be nice, for example. Like, any of the other ones would work, if you don't have it. As long as it increases intelligence. So, that's everything I want to say about Rene. Overall, she's not a hard character to build. You know, just like most mages, you just want to pump up her intelligence, pump up some in uh, pump up some hit points if possible. The only difference for Rene is she wants all debuffing equipment. So I guess that does make her unique. I hope you found this video u informative and useful. And on that note, Nitro out.